Hi, everyone. So we have here Klaus Pomer, Managing Director of Semina, and he will tell us about uh, your wake up call to sleep, the biohackers formula for sleep success. So Klaus, go ahead and tell us more about this. Yeah, thank you, first of all, to have me on this exciting virtual seminar. I was uh, looking forward to the entire week to be part of this Congress with many of my actually friends and other colleagues there. Um, I'm very honored to be part of it. Again, my name is Klaus Pummer. I'm the president of Natural by Design, the managing director of Samina North America, and I'm a certified holistic sleep coach by the Austrian Institute, Institute of Sleep Psychology, um, run by Dr. Professor Günther Amann Jensen. And any one of you guys like to get some of the links and resources, you have a couple of options to reach us. Send us either an email, text us the cell phone number, or just call the toll-free number to get some additional information. So what we want to talk today is, you know, your wake-up call to sleep. I think we all know sleep is important, but I think in reality, we're not paying all the time enough time to really make sure we get the most out of sleep. And uh, especially when we want to biohack our human body, in, in sleep is unconditional, one of the most important subjects from my point of view. Um, we all understand when we had a problem sleeping, and we have sleep deprivation, you know, what, what terrible things can happen. We stumble, you know, in the morning, poor memory, the less ability to pay attention. Resources are ability to learn. That's the reason I'm always on the neck with my teenagers and my kids to send them early to bed. And I definitely know when you don't get enough sleep, you will not learn and you will definitely not remember what you learned the day before the next day. Uh, poor decision making, it's also, I think, a very important key component of sleep deprivation. Uh, some companies are now getting smart, then postponing lunch meetings to either early morning meetings or meetings after four o'clock, when we're kind of getting a hype again for the day. But a meeting right after lunch doesn't sound good to anyone, right? We get tired. Uh, driving and accidents, I think, is a big deal. Uh, we should sleep, we're not paying attention to traffic lights, and we don't pay attention to making mistakes. Uh, I think yeah, very interesting here to say is in over 98 countries, uh, when you've been awake for 17 hours, you have actually a blood, con blood alcohol content of 0.05%, uh, kind of very interesting study here. Um, sleep deprivation also has a very, you know, long-term impact on our health. Um, heart diseases, accidents, as I recently described, diabetes, and high blood pressure are definitely based on, you know, not getting enough sleep. And then seven or fifteen leading causes of that are linked in the United States to the lack of sleep. So I think here we can really see how important sleep is. And not only only the hours of sleep, it's quite important to get even quality sleep. And this is almost more important, I think. And we have definitely not pay enough attention on this matter. So here you can see uh, some statistics as well. Consistently sleeping less six hours per night increases your risk of death by 13%. This is a quite high number. Even you sleep six to seven hours, what I'm sure sounds quite long for some of our listeners today, you still have a rest of 7% of that. And when you even sleep not enough to, to get the cold, the flu, and other infection, and then of course, you know, in the time where we are right now, we are now all the way, everybody knows the danger of coronavirus and how the coronavirus infects our immune system. And the, it sort of fits perfectly in this family. So we have to get at least our eight hours in to make sure we boost our immune system to stay healthy, to fight these horrible diseases, what we have to deal right now with it. Here you can see a little bit 
the statistic what we do in our lifetime. Uh, when we turn 75 years, we spend 25 years in bed. And this sounds just horrible in one way, but this is reality. And when you really want to break it down, every day we should sleep eight hours. In one year, this will equal really to four months. And again, over the lifetime of our lives, we spent 25 years in bed. Here you can see how important this decision is to A, buy the proper mattress. Second of all, pay more attention on your sleeping environment, your bedroom. And when you see all other activities, even we think we watch much more TV in life, but the average is only eight years. We working seven and a half years only. This sounds strange too, uh, but this is of course based on a 38 hour week, uh, including the European way of holidays. In Europe, we definitely receive anywhere between three weeks vacation and, and for some countries and companies, even up to six to eight weeks. Um, again, this statistic here, I think is pretty interesting to see how much time we spend for stuff. And again, when we spend so much time sleeping, then I guess sleeping is definitely no nonsense. So in the world of a biohacker, what we want to really accomplish here, right? In general, biohacking is really an art and a, with the power of science and your internal and external environment to really control your own human body on the inside, but also control your outside world and pay attention in what kind of environment you are and where you go to bed, where do you sleep, what do I eat, what restaurant choices I do, what kind of supplementation I like to take. So we have a lot of control and I think this is the beautiful part on this new com community biohacking uh, what is more a modern approach to really pay attention of you know all these impacts from our internal and external environment? There is some limitation in our external environment, the same as we have some limitation on our internal environment. But I think we can do much more than we thought we can do. For your personal formula for better sleep, you know, you can ask you some basic questions, you know, do you have a bedtime routine? You know, do you go to bed Monday to Friday at the same time when you go to bed on Saturday and Sundays? I think it's maybe a very important question. How much sleep do I get? You you know, you can wake up in the morning and say, okay, oh, I went a little bit late to bed yesterday. How I feel this morning, not so good. Maybe I go today a little bit earlier to bed and get an hour extra sleep and then compare, you know, how you feel the next morning. Regularly sleep is very important. You know, it doesn't we cannot really catch up with missing sleeping hours. When the day passed by and then next night is coming and we had a crappy sleep and we had missing hours, you cannot catch up those missing sleeping hours. Many people think they can, but we cannot. It's impossible uh, scientifically to catch up sleeping hours. You maybe feel a little bit of a rest there, but the body will take any time at all you're missing those hours. What is the, how I can measure the quality of my sleep? You know, there's different things. Do I use a modern device or I, do, or I make my own home studies? Again, how we sleep, you know, weekdays and weekends. Do you work nights? A very good question. You know, sometimes we, in professions where we have to have night shifts, police, policemen, fire departments, hospitals, I can only imagine how many doctors this day work night shift in hospitals overfilled with corona patients, right? For them, sleep is so, so important right now to be ready and rested the next morning, especially when you have responsibility with other people's life. And again, pay attention a little bit, you know, how you feel the morning, how, how well rested are you? Did anyone ever ask you the next morning, hey, what's wrong with you? Did you not sleep well? You can see it very often in your face with dark eye rings and you kind of have face, facial impression and people definitely will spot very easily if you slept well or not. So how the biohackers measure the sleep? Most likely you're using technology, either your iPhone with various apps, you can you have an aura ring, download the data and, and look at the, res, the response from the previous nights and you have a good comparison. So again, the biohackers really want to make sure they get anywhere between seven and nine hours of sleeping time. You really want to get this deep, slow wave doing sleep at minimum 
you want minimum 20 to 25 percent rmm sleep this, this is the most important stage of sleep as well you definitely want to make sure you can fall in sleep very quickly less than 15 minutes when you're up for an hour then there's already something wrong there you want to make sure you know the device tells you a little bit about your body movement in the nighttime and awakening in the night and also you want to kind of get some statistics if did you had snoring and how many restless movements you had during the nighttime and very important here is the increased heart rate variability uh, compared for daytime and nighttime so those are really very sophisticated information what you can measure with many apps and many sleeping um, devices you can buy on the market now let's do this for the main public for people who just either forget to download those apps or even you're having a sleep device like aura ring but then you would not wear it while you forgot about it or the battery is empty then you still have options to make those kind of I idea performance with yourself findings you can wake up in the morning and say how i feel this morning do i feel foggy or i'm ready to go for the day do i need two cups of coffee or i'm ready to rock and roll with any kind of coffee or intake you can get a good idea how you know to fall asleep you know uh, the night before you get i do a bit drowsy during the daytime did i feel hot last night too cold was my room temperature right you know there's all these little things i think very important also is my back hurting in the morning i think there's a very important component back pain is definitely painful experience during the night time when you feel it but for the next day even worse there's nothing worse to wake up and spend all day at work with back pain. It's definitely not yeah. help you to concentrate and do a good job. And it's just painful. It's just poor pain. Is your partner or your pet waking you up during the nighttime, right? Very often you wish you have a good night's sleep and this, you know, and you sometimes feel this really only when you go to a hotel for when you travel on your own and you don't bring your household animal or you don't have a chance to bring your partner. And all of a sudden you sleep like a baby in a hotel bed and even maybe the environment is not the best one but at least no one was able to wake you up except the cleaning lady jumping in and door in the morning not reading your sign no no disturbance so there's a lot of little things here how you can measure your own sleep without any device or apps so now let me share some of the sleep sacks i think for them uh, we all know already we have a circadian rhythm starts with the sunrise in the morning and the sunset in the evening and this really never changes for millions of years there was always the sunrise and the sunset right what is changing is the time of sunrise and the time of sunset in different countries and doing time changes once a year and i think that the sunrise and sunset is a very old easy indication for you to live the best life in regards of sleeping cycle and the sleep rhythm so when the sun goes down then your body knows it's time to get ready to go to bed and you should do a little little tiny things to help your body to get actually ready for the night time and what we do know is when the sun goes down the body changes slowly to night mode in night mode our body gets very vulnerable so we have to make sure we turn off and lower the exposure of this blue light from our computer screen telephone and any kind of devices a tv is a tiny little a different story tvs are normally six to ten feet away from you but anything what is very close to your eyesight the blue light have major impact you can wear blue blocking glasses from various brands um, and uh, of course you know you have to really black out your bedroom to make sure there's no light exposure whatsoever um, I'm, I know Dave Asprey, my dear friend and big Samina sleeper, he travels with a little el electro tape while he will cover any kind of device, uh, light exposure from, um, you know, wireless signals in the rooms and other uh, remote controls and fridges and so on. Okay, now here's the air, the air, air pollution. So it, it's astounding um, how important air quality is. Our indoor air is actually more poison than our outdoor air, what is hard to believe. Um, but there is too much off-gassing in people's home. You know, carpets, painting, mattresses, sofas, all this kind of stuff, it's off-gassing consistently. 
Um, I obviously don't guess and test. There is different, you know, ways how you can actually test this. But the general guideline is when the weather allows you and not too much humidity outside, and uh, you have screens for mosquitoes, try to open to get some airflow during the nighttime in your bedroom. And this is a very good device. I have no financial relationship with IQ Air, but this little mid tiny machine tells you really, and this is the shocking, even for myself, I started using this device a couple of months ago. Uh, anytime we turn our gas stove on for cooking purpose, our readings go up downhill. So very good device to have. The third biohack, EMF exposure. You know, the, the, I think it's 50-50 in the world. Some people think, you know, EMF have a major negative impact on well-being and, of course, your health and sleep. And I'm on definitely on this side, but other people think no problem. However, there's definitely already some evidence, maybe not enough evidence, long-term use. We're talking 25 years. But we do know from Samina, and I do know a lot of other people who are consistently confirming, especially when we're looking with people in the integrated and functional world, like Dr. Mikola and Dr. Klinghardt, when you have a high exposure of electromagnetic fields in your home, in your bedroom, you will not have proper melatonin and cortisol levels. And what is even more important, the oxygenation goes away from your red blood fat cells. And this has a very negative impact. In regards of oxygenation, this deficiency, we see this by the coronavirus now too. Seems like the coronavirus affects the lung and oxygenation of the lungs. And some doctors did not know why the symptom appears. But we already know we live in 2020 in a very modern environment and the human body need, really never adapted to you know, a 4, 4, 4G signal or 5G signal and never adapted to all these household electronics and devices we use in, in life. And this has, a, of course, a negative impact of the rest and the rest of resting the recovery. So now another good hack, I think it's a good mattress is like a good machine. Um, I seems like I have a little bit trouble here with my computer today. Maybe my hard drive is full and I should clean up my hard drive. So we really pay a lot of attention on, you know, our hard drive of our computer, then our software only runs properly with a proper hard drive. The same is with your mattress. You cannot imagine to have high sleeping scores and get a lot of, out of your quality of sleep when you sleep on a $500 mattress and even a mattress or a product you just purchased online with an, not enough education on your end to really find out what, what did I buy? What is the contents of my mattress? Does this mattress have metal springs? Is this metal springs free? Do I have toxin in my mattress? Is this a mattress who's 100% certified organic. There is so many little things here, pay attention on it. And the problem is with this mattress purchase, when you do a mistake, what you do every day between every night to six to eight hours, even a tiny mistake has a long-term negative side effects. When I eat once in a while, a fast food will not kill me and I only do it once a month, okay, I did it. But again, when we buy the wrong mattress, and we go to bed every night with these products, we have to think about it, the quantity, how often we're using and how often we're making these mistakes. A good pillow is so important, like the right pair of shoes, right? You need absolutely orthopedically spinal and neck support on a supportive pillow. Uh, I actually currently wrote a little ebook, Seven Ways How Our Mattress Is Killing You, so please feel free to go to saminasleep.com and um, upload the free ebook, uh, very interesting stories there. Here you can see what I would consider a good mattress. A good mattress starts with a proper back support, and this has to be actually always, always individually per person. And here with Samina, we have these wooden slats, and they come always as a set by two in each bed. This means th those wooden slats contour to each body's sleeper weight, body height, and body shape independently. It's really, really a cool system. When you actually can to remove all the top layers and you're able to jump in, they're just flexible and durable. What is also very important for a good mattress, I would consider comfort. You want to make sure the mattress is not too soft, the mattress is not too firm. It's very important to make, pay attention on it. I think it's un, undiscussable a grounding pad can help us to get rid of some of the external impact of EMFs, 
While internal, we have a lot of control. We can turn devices off. While external, is not much con what we can do. So Samina even offers a grounding pad to take care of this subject. The wool top, uh, what this imitates, you know, breathability and the temperature is very important. You don't want to sleep too hot or too cold. You want to make sure you have the right sleeping temperature and in synthetic based mattresses and goose or goose feather down products, you can really have no proper sleeping temperature. You always feel too hot or too cold, what is unnaturally. And even worse, you encourage the dust mites to live in your bed. And then what dust mites love to do, they take some of your liquid, what you sweat through the night, they eat a little bit of your dead skin cells and dust mites can add up to seven pounds of dust mite poop in one night to in one year to your mattress. And when people keep their mattresses for five to ten years, you can just imagine this amount of dirt in your mattress. So my opinion is Samina is the best bed out there. Again, we really cover everything. A proper naturally non-toxic and metal-free spinal support, but we don't use any inner springs. We have enough sleeping comfort with a very thin, breathable organic rubber. We do even have our grounding pad to help you with the external impact of EMF signals. During the last three months, we definitely see improvements for four or 5G cell phone towers installments through most of the cities. And they're very often, of course, in residential neighborhoods. There's not much what you can do. But grounding, a grounding pad definitely can help you to limit the exposure. Uh, we at Samina even offer incline position. Incline means your head is approximately 3.5 degrees higher than your legs. And this will help your lymph system to detoxify about three to four times or better than in horizontal sleep. And um, that's the reason why I think you, there's no other op op option for me to to find Samina, and this was leading me to Samina. I was looking for the best mattress ever, and after a year sleeping in futons, I discovered Samina when I was, was living in Germany, and since then, since the last 22 years, this is my favorite choice. Here you see some, uh, some people who purchased Samina, and what they say about Samina, they were obviously uh, the bio bio father of biohacking purchased this product quite a long time ago and uh, be a big fan of the biohacking community through his crowd and we also main sponsor in the biohacking event what it was unfortunately postponed for next year and this is his ex experience with samina uh, dr dirich klinghardt um, a very well known figure in healing lime and mold I made this decision with Samina many, many years ago and also recommend this brand very heavily to his patients. And we definitely see a direct impact uh, with a better sleeping environment from your mattress, how we can help his alternative approach for various diseases to keep people healing faster and become more successful with the disease. And Daniel Martellis, it's also a, a lovely figure out there. He's all about living outside with nature and he made this decision of a Samina bed six years ago and uh, he changed changed for him a lot and um, he's a cool cool person to follow as well and then of course JJ version who is really well known for her many books about nutrition uh, how she sees the connection between proper food intake and healthy good night sleep, then we, we know for sure when you have a proper healthy good night sleep, you easily can lose a, a couple of pounds every night uh, during the next couple of years uh, to keep the perfect body weight. So here a little bit what you need for proper bed sleep routine. You have a, need a dark room between the temperature 60 to 67 Fahrenheit. You can turn off your cell phone or put it at least in airplay mode when you need a function for alarm clock. Please turn off all other devices. Uh, your Wi-Fi router is not helping you. Anything what is a uh, Bluetooth technology like Sonos speakers uh, sending signals all night during the house, you don't use them anyway. So please turn them off. There's a simple trick. You can go to the, the panel box and turn off the breaker or you get at least the kill switch installed for the bedroom outlets and just lie in bed, press a little remote. Uh, take a, a hot, uh, take a bath and a shower before you go to bed, most likely with cold water. Uh, I think cold water is in my preference, but you also can do hot water, but, but is, especially when you bath. But you can ice bath. This definitely will help you to lower the body temperature. Then there's nothing worse to go to bed and be too hot 
you have trouble to fall to sleep. Instead of using an ebook, I always like hardcover books and you don't have any blue light exposure. You know, your mindset, please think about your day, things we are uh, thankful for, think about things what you accomplished today, you know, positive thoughts help you. Um, keep a keep a little notepad beside bed, then hope when you have a proper sleeping environment, then dreaming becomes very important and the dreams help you to deal with your past and your future. And maybe you write down some of your dreams and then one day you will understand why you dreamt uh, certain things. And of course, you know, tapping is a very easy thing. What you can do, there's many good authors out there who guides you to easy way how to make meditation and tapping. Again, thank you for everybody to listen 